It is terrific to be back here at Village Books and to be here in Bellingham, which is just such a spectacular city. Freezing today, but gorgeous. The sun was just remarkable. The clouds, you have to realize I come up from Eugene, where, as many of you may know, most of the year it is gray down to the, what would be the, the grass in the river. Not really, but not sparkling like it was here today in, in Bellingham. And, and this is a special place for me, and I have to tell you why. Before, before I talk about the books, and, it, and it's really a, a great evening for me because two books came out of mine this season, and that's a rare occurrence. They're very different books in many respects, and I've been thinking about it to be talking about it with you today, thinking about uh, how it could be that they're, that they're so different. One of them, no animals were harmed, and it deals with the point where animal use becomes animal abuse, and, and where is this line? It's a moving line, I think, for all of us, and everybody, everybody approaches this differently, and maybe even with each animal it's different. And then Calexico, True Lives of the Borderlands. So, so a, a book about immigration and, and the border, and a book about animal abuse, and, and I've, been, I've been thinking about this, and, and in fact, maybe they're not that different in many respects, because with borders, we're often abusing ourselves, and when you're looking at the point where animal use becomes animal abuse, you're, you're looking at a border. Before I talk more about that and tell you something about the books and, and read some from them, I, I want to tell you why this is such a special place for me. I was here now, it must be four years ago, the first time here at Village Books, one of the most magical independent bookstores in America, such a community builder, and, and uh, this room was packed to overflowing. And it was the summertime, and it was hot, and just as is the case tonight, C-SPAN was here. As I was talking about a book of mine called Mission Rejected, titled Mission Rejected, Mission Rejected is about soldiers who came back from the Iraq war opposed to the war because of their experiences, or they chose not to deploy to the Iraq war because they opposed the Iraq war. And, and uh, the, the room was, was packed with people from Bellingham and also with veterans because there, there was a Veterans Against War convention going on up at, uh, I guess it was in Seattle, and also up at the border. So it was a hot evening. The lights were on from the cameras as they are, as they are tonight. And, uh, and I was wired, as I am here, with this microphone, so I couldn't, I couldn't take off my jacket. It was just hot and uncomfortable. And, and, uh, and, it, and the, the subject matter was extraordinarily difficult to deal with. The, the stories of these soldiers that they told about why they became opposed to the war were sobering at best. So after talking for about an hour, a, during the question and answer period, a woman raised her hand, as is not uncommon in these kinds of author events, and, and said, what's your next book going to be about? And I just wanted to get off stage at that point, and I said, this has been so, such a difficult uh, assignment that my next book is going to be about butterflies and flowers. And it was, there was a little bit of a titter through the, the crowd, and I said, thank you very much, and, and left. Now, because C-SPAN was, uh, was running the talk on book TV in the lower third of the screen was my name and my, my website, which led people to it to send email messages. And about half of them came out, as you would expect, uh, calling me a, a traitor and, and hate mail because of the topic of the book, the subject matter of the book about people coming back from Iraq post the war, and about half were saying, yes, this is, the, this is absolutely right, let's draw attention to what's wrong with this war. In the middle of those two extremes was a note from a woman from Nicaragua, and she, she said, you were making a joke about butterflies, but my husband and I are American expats living in, in Granada, and we have a butterfly preserve down here. And if you come down, we will show you that in fact there is a book about butterflies. And 
in, in fact, I, well, I thought about it a while. I exchanged some email messages with her. And finally, it was my wife who said, you've got to go down there because this looks like there might be something for you to check out. I went down there, and in fact, I learned about the extraordinary world beyond just the enjoyment that so many of us have looking at butterflies, which included butterfly smuggling of endangered butterfly species and thousands of dollars changing hands. That's why I have this uh, butterfly pin on my lapel, because that evening here at Village Books changed my life. I wrote the book, The Dangerous World of Butterflies, which opened up the world of strange things that go on with animals to me and followed it with a book that I, and, and came back here and talked about it, and, and then followed it with a book about so-called exotic pets. And I was here last year talking about that book, Forbidden Creatures, and learned about the kinds of people that, uh, well, I'm sure many of you remember just a few weeks ago the case in Ohio where one of these types of people that find it appropriate and valuable to them for some reason and reasons that I learned about, collecting, obsessive collecting, a desire to attempt to show that they're able to, to, to control something that could potentially kill them, scare others, as in the case with uh, drug dealers, often these, these uh, drug kingpins will have private zoos, but also moguls in business. William Randolph Hearst had a private zoo that became the San Francisco Public Zoo. And, and so this case in Ohio, where the, the fellow, whatever was wrong with him, let these animals loose and then killed himself, is, a, is an extreme example of those who have exotic pets. And that led to the third book, this one, No Animals Were Harmed, which is just coming out now. No Animals Were Harmed looks at the controversial line between entertainment and abuse with animals. And, and so that's why it's special to be here and to have C-SPAN here tonight because I would not have, have uh, spent the last few years immersed in this world and come up with these, these three books. It's become a trilogy now of books about our interaction with animals that so often is strange. And, and one of the odd things, this afternoon I was speaking with the woman who's the executive director of the Whitcomb County Humane Society, and, and uh, I hope I'm not going to write a fourth book that deals with bestiality, which is one of these things where even just saying the word, you kind of want to wash your hands. But what, Whatcomb County is... Uh, unfortunately a, has been a headquarters for this kind of activity in part because there wasn't a Washington law specifically forbidding it. There, there is now and there's a notorious case here which we are not going to talk about tonight but maybe I'll be back in a year with the fourth book and then it becomes a quartet. So where, where is this point where animal use becomes animal abuse? It, it really, in many res, res, respects, probably depends on the, the animal. Very few of us, if a dog were growling here and bothering us right now, would take a baseball bat and whack the dog and, and kill it. But probably most of us, if a mosquito were flying around and landed on us, would have no problem slapping the mosquito. Many of us here would not have any problem after we talk about this going over to the Mexican restaurant next door and ordering a burrito filled with chicken. And, and yet what is it that makes it so that there is a law against cockfighting here in Washington and across all 50 states? This is what I looked at as I was working on the book. And in fact, cockfighting is a continuing reference point as I'm trying to come to terms with what is use and what is abuse. And I decided I wanted to see a cockfight so that I could, could uh, grapple with that in person, even though I myself don't eat chicken in part because I don't think that we should be 
twisting the necks of chickens j just to eat them because we don't, we don't need to. I wanted to see a cockfight. What is it that makes it so that it's okay to raise